Okay, guys. We are on. We are continuing on with the House of David and this subject matter. And we're going to get into something that I realize I have to cover in order uh, for you to, um, you know, have this established. And there are, are things I'm going to say and later things that, um, you know, we must come to terms with uh, this, this subject that we're going to cover here, okay? Um, I actually just did this and it went too long and I stopped it and I'm doing it again. <laughs> so I have to speak very fast and I have to cover a lot of information. So if I say anything that blows your mind or whatever, you know, or you have the notes, I'll send them, uh, pause it, look at it, uh, take your time. I'm going to have to cover a lot. I'm going to do the best I can, uh, but we're going to go through this stuff. Okay. So first off, I'm putting this on YouTube. This is going public. And if anyone is listening to this, and you don't know me from Adam. Let me say this. Everything I'm saying, I'm saying as a witness and testimony that God so loved the world that he sent his son. Whosoever believes on him shall not uh, perish, but have everlasting life. So I want to give a witness and testimony that God loves you. And he sent his son to die for you. And that we should believe in him. Okay. And we are also going through the process of his um, giving us the opportunity to be redeemed and to become kings and priests of the Most High God. Okay? So there's certain things that we must know history-wise, the history of God's creation, the history of um, his God's order and priesthood in order to establish what, you know, God uh, expects of us. Okay? So I want to say that so that if anything, you know, believe or it's just like, whoa, it's not the way I heard it. Um, most of the stuff I'm going to cover is, is very controversial, and there's just a lot of confusion. And so I'm hoping to do this so it's not confusing. It's just kind of like, oh, okay. So, uh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the, the space in, in time. God in Genesis 1-1 said he created the heavens and earth um, in the beginning, and then in verse 2, the earth is well, form and void. Okay, so what happened? So we have... Uh, this time or timelessness. Uh, but what we're dealing with is we're dealing with the state and condition of the earth that is not good. But God created everything in each day and said, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. But in Genesis 1 2, the earth is not good. Okay? So that's what we're going to go over. And let me say this that this in science is obviously well known. If we say, no, God created the heavens and earth. And there's no lapse between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. We're basically saying all history in the universe is only 6,000 years, which is silly because there is light that is traveling 16 or 15 billion light years in order to reach us. That light is so, uh, travels so far that the wavelengths extend. And so we measure the light in color. So the closer galaxies are more blue because the wavelength of that light that's reaching us is closer and the ones that are farther away it's more red and so based on that wavelength and the color that we see we can determine the distance so obviously the light is taking 16 billion light years to reach you so you can't say that the earth is only 6,000 years it's silly science knows this but in religious circles it's like well no that's not so but it is so and so we're going to look at it then it may, so many of the things I'm going to say should create more questions than answers. I don't have all the answers. I just only have some of the answers of the questions I asked. Because I'm like, I want to know about this, God. What happened? What, what's going on? And what I want to do is, uh, uh, now many things that I'm going to describe to you I've actually seen, but I'm going to focus on the scriptures to show you the, the fact that God um, did talk about this. Okay? All right. So let's get into it. Let's go. Um, if you have the handout, um, go ahead and uh, you know have that available. We'll be using that as uh, as the notes here. And um, I'm going to go. Its uh, title is "The World That Then Was." So in uh, in in Second Peter uh, three six, it, he said, "The world that then was being overflow with water um, perished." Right. But um, verse 7, but the heavens of earth, which are now. So we're going to look at this world that then was. Okay, so the first thing that we must understand 
is Isaiah 45, 18 says, The Lord created the heavens and formed the earth. He created it not in vain. Now, in vain here is the Hebrew word tohu. Okay? And, he, and then it says he formed it to be inhabited. So this planet was formed and created to be inhabited. It was also formed and created not in vain. So that word is tohu. Now, when you look at Genesis 1-2, it says the earth was without form. Tohu. So what's happening is the earth is in a state that it was not supposed to be. Obviously. And void, bohu, in darkness, uh, was upon the face of the deep. So when we're looking at Genesis 1-2, the state and condition of the earth is not according to its design. It's experienced judgment. So, this begs the question, well, why is the earth in a state of judgment? Why is the earth not inhabited? God created it to be inhabited, and it was inhabited by somebody, and they're not there anymore. <laughs> okay? So let's look at these Hebrew words as well. So in the Hebrew, uh, we have these words for uh, void, um, without form, and void. But um, tohu means this. Um, it's formless, confusion, in unreality, emptiness, nothingness, empty space, wasteland, wilderness, a place of chaos. So this is not good. This is not how God created it. And void means, or bohu means, uh, void, emptiness, waste. So this is the state we find the earth. So this is not good, okay? Now, uh, Jeremiah talks about it. And the only other place besides Genesis 1-2 where you find these two Hebrew words, tohu and bohu, is in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. And so Jeremiah goes back in time, and he sees the earth in this state. So in Genesis 1-2, when God you know, says, uh, you know, the earth was all form and void, darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of the, water, the Lord covered the waters, um, Jeremiah is taken to that, and he sees it. But what he says is interesting I beheld the earth and it was out was without form, so and void, bohu. So there's the words, and no man was there. The birds fled, and the fruitful place became a wilderness. So what he's saying is that before this, there was someone else here. There was a man here; he's not here anymore. There were birds here, but they fled. Uh, the fruitful place. So there was a fruitful place of plant life and everything. Now it's a wilderness. This is what he's saying. Okay. So, um, that's what happened. So, we find that the earth is not accord, um, in a place, in a state that is not according to its original design and creation. So, then what we have is God said, well, it's time to do this again. I created the earth to be inhabited. It's not inhabited. So, let's do this. Okay, well, what do we, what do we want to do? And so, God does stuff in council, guys. So we did it this in council, and then was like, okay, what do you guys think? And so it's like, well, let's make man. So let's make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him take dominion over this creation. Okay? So God does a, um, let's call it a recreation. Let's do this again. Okay, we, we, we did this before, and the people that had the authority at that time screwed it up. They were judged. They're gone. Now let's start it again. Okay? So that's what um, happens. So the seven days of creation are a recreation, all right? So, for example, in the plant life, um, God speaks to the earth. So then the earth comes up above the waters, and then he says, bring forth uh, grass, herbs, and trees. So what's happening? And you have earth. Well, what's happening? There's seeds in it. And then he's like, okay, seeds, come, come and, you know, come back to your original design. Come back, you know, uh, form trees and, and everything else. So, uh, so the... The seed of the trees was already in the earth. He's just bringing it forth, okay? Um, but now let's look at creation, okay? Let's look at the, uh, let's go back to day one, okay? So we go back, um, the earth, again, is judged. Um, basically what happened is the earth, uh, obviously in our solar system and planets were here, but um, it reached a point where the sun was destroyed, the sun is gone, and so without that, um, actually, first off, what you have is you have a flood coming the whole earth. You have the sun being wiped out. You have the earth freezing and the water's freezing. We have ice ages and all that stuff. 
And then what happens is God says, okay, we're going to do this again. Um, so what he does is he uh, uh, heats up the center of the earth to cause the waters to melt. We have the waters melting. And then he uh, begins this recreation. He says, okay, light be. So what happens is the heavens now are involved in converging on the earth. And so there's no sun. There's still no sun. That's not until, what is that, day three or four. All right. So uh, the light be, heaven is there. The Father and the glory of the Father is resonating into our solar system again. And uh, now the attention is to uh, do this again. So that's day one. Bye. Light be. Okay. Then day two, we have a firmament. Okay. So then you have waters and then he begins to... Uh, he has this covering over the planet that is a marvelous thing. Uh, it, it, it's some things that we, we have no uh, concept how beautiful in design. Uh, and God had a whole day set up just for this firmament, this covering. Okay, And then um, uh, day three is the sun, right? I think so, sun and moon stars. So then what happened is this segment of the universe that this our solar system in was darkened as well. In and around it, I don't know if the whole galaxy was gone, and if he put the Milky Way around us and formed the, uh, the stars and constant. I don't know all of that, but basically, uh, the sun is there, so you already have light B, that's the father. Now you have the sun, and the light is going back to the planets, and this is actually proved scientifically where there's water that is older than our sun. They have actually found this, you can Google it, okay? And that's true. The witness and testimony I'm giving is true, science knows these things. Okay, so uh, what's happening? So uh, there were things on the planets before, okay, just like in the Earth. They were also inhabited. Stuff happened. Um, okay, so uh, then we, we go through uh, creation and the, you have animals and he, and he does it all again. Okay, so then he does it again. He says, okay, here's man. We have made him in our image and like him. Let's have dominion uh, and rule over um, this planet, right? But what we have is we have this place that you know, in our in our world now, it, this, this place is, you know, heaven and earth are one. They are just converged. There's no separation, right? And, and you know, and let's just look at the garden a little bit. We have to. All right. So, you know, uh, for some reason, we don't really think it's a big deal. But apparently, there's animals talking to Adam and Eve. <laughs> the serpent, right, is more subtle, right? But he wasn't a serpent. He was, God cursed him and he took off his arms and legs and he went on his belly. But prior to that, what was he? He was a dragon. And so the dragon appears to Adam and is like, hey man, disobey God. And he's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But the thing is, guys, he's not surprised. And the, he's, it's not just some voice, shh, as God said. He sees him. The dragon is here. Hey, dragon, you know, you know. And it's like, but it's not weird to him because all the animals talk. You know, Adam is like, hey, here's a dog. Hey, dog, what's, what's your role here? So he, he's not just naming it. He's forming relationship. Dog, I'll call you dog. Okay, dog, what is your role? Well, you know, I'm a dog. I can help you herd sheep or whatever. You know, he'll tell you, right? <laughs> so, they, so he's talk, naming the animal. He's talking to him. And then there's like this dragon. And this dragon is like, hey, disobey God. And he's like, wait a minute. I thought, what are, what's the deal with this dragon? All the other animals God said are good. But this one is different. So we had to distinguish the fact that God had some animals that were good and there were some that weren't. So God is always going to do that. He's always going to throw stuff in there that you have. He's going to tell you first, obey me. These are the rules. He's going to tell you, obey me. But then he's going to throw some other stuff in there that, that you have to decide. So he has to decide. Okay, wait a minute. The dog is good, but the dragon is not. You know, like, wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, God gave me dominion. And the dominion wasn't for the dog because he's good. The dominion was for some other stuff that's in here as well that isn't good that's trying to tell me to do contrary to what God said, right? So, but the dragon is seed and it's there, right? I don't know if you think about these things, but, you know, in Genesis 6, when the angels, you know, saw that the women are good, I mean, the angels were there. They were there. They could see and talk. They're just, you know, and they're like, well, have sex with me. I mean, I don't know if you think about that. That is just bizarre. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but what's happening is this world of uh, spirit beings and, you know, natural beings, it's all just one. It's all just this kind of melting pot, okay? So uh, now what we're dealing with is this problem we have where the angels have sex with women and create something that is not good. Again, 
Uh, so what the, what, what's happening is, is these spirit beings know the importance of this planet and its order and God, it's designed by God. It, it holds also great authority over not just here, but more. Uh, let's put it that way, okay? So what, there's a fight for this planet and there's a fight for this, right? And so there's a tension here to do shenanigans because um, God is doing good stuff, but they're all trying to, you know, do different things, all right? So... Uh, now we have this thing, so God created mankind, and it's created in a way that, okay, there's certain rules and laws to it. Now you have this thing, it's a giant, uh, it's half angel, half man, uh, it's got different, you know, DNA, and it's got a different spirit. So the rules of a human spirit, when it dies, it goes, you know, somewhere. Now, it, now what do you do? Now you have a different thing, it has different rules. So that's what we call evil spirits now. And that's the problem with these, uh, this, this thing, because you have an eternal being and an angel coming with mankind, creating a different thing. So, um, so I want to mention those. It's in the notes here. Uh, but what they are is they're, they're, you know, they're Nephilim. But um, Isaiah 26, 14 says, Ghosts will not rise again. Um, ghosts of the dead, they trembled beneath the waters with the creature. So now what you have is this spirit, this kind of ghost spirit, uh, that is an evil spirit, which is disembodied. It once had a body, it died, but it doesn't go to, you know, heaven or hell. It go, It's left to roam the earth, okay? Um, and in Job 26.5, it talks about the Ghosts, Arafa, and this is these are races of giants. So you have these things going on. But what's happening is the spirit beings that were doing that are doing that to you know do their own thing, to create, recreate uh, the, the shenanigans they did in the first place. This is not new. Okay. Um, now in the notes, I have this whole thing on God's covenant with Noah. I talked about that in terms of the calendar, and be, for time's sake, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but now what I want to do is begin to look at, so God has is, is, um, given us the opportunity to be kings and priests of the Most High God. But what we must do is, this is a history lesson, where we're now going to go and look at those who, of, uh, who have gone before us in time, even before human history, who have been in this role. Okay, And so we must uh, learn this. Um, and it's and it's important. Okay, so now, um, so essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about three classifications or three classes or eras of time of um, uh, cherubs or uh, around the throne of God. Okay, so the first one we have the anointed cherub uh, or Lucifer, and then you find about out about him in um, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. Okay, so um, it, it describes a in in um. In Ezekiel 28, 1 through 10, it describes this king, okay? And then um, through uh, verses 11, 19, it describes an high priest. So this being is this combination of king and high priest, okay? Another way we find this is that uh, he has uh, nine precious stones and gold embedded in his body. So the nine precious stones represent that of his high priestly order, and gold in his actual body uh, describes his kingly order. So we have this being that's both king and high priest. Uh, now the Levitical high priest had uh, 12 stones as a high priest, but we know that the tribes were separated from Judah and Levi that they would not be the same. Okay. However, this being was both, All right, and that's what the gold represents. Now the high priest had gold in his garments and everything. But remember, this being is not wearing garments. It is a precious stone that rep represent things, and it is gold. So the gold is what the king trades with. All right. So with this gold, uh, he gained uh, wisdom and trading and increase in riches and uh, was cast out. Okay. So what happens is this king, this king, uh, the order within this anointed cherub, um, you know, he's like, well, I'll exalt my throne. Look at me. I'm pretty cool. Uh, and so what he does is he begins to uh, trade and get strength to, um, you know, gain power against God by trading. Now, this didn't happen within like a day. I mean, it, it, I mean he's doing this over thousands of years and, you know, not just on the earth, but in other uh, places in the galaxy uh, or in the universe. All right. But it's important for us to know that he is 
a, you know, he is go, a, anointed cherub designed to worship God. And he is in the closest places of God. He's in Eden. He's in the garden of God. He's in the mountain of God. So those represent him walking through the stones of fire, the walking through the outer court, inner court, and holy of holies, right? But when he's kicked out, what happens? He's anointed cherub, but then God twists him. He changes his visage. He changes his body. He changes him from this beautiful anointed cherub into a dragon, okay? And uh, Job says that. Uh, he, cast, he cast him out with fire and turned him into a drag, Job 26, uh, 13. So now we find him as this dragon that appears in the garden, right? Okay, he was replaced by his roles as a king and a high priest by Melchizedek. So when he's out, um, the kingly aspect certainly is uh, replaced by Melchizedek. But it's also quite possible that the priestly aspect of him is fulfilled by the seraphim, all right? So this is a mystery. So um, in Isaiah 6, um, two stood over the throne. So the anointed cherub was over the throne. The seraphim, there are two, and they sit over the throne. Now, in the Hebrew, the um, word is for seraphim is seraph, which means burning one's fiery serpent, bronze in color, and they shook the temple, crying, holy, 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 uh, and they released great glory in the smoke. So these are very powerful and, and glorious beings, okay? Uh, it's, it's quite possible that in uh, Isaiah 25, it, verse 3, it talks about, about a fierce people uh, will glorify, a terrible nation uh, will fear you. And it, it's quite possible that we're dealing with two here that we're looking at, but these two are in a place of promotion, okay? So what happened? Well, um, okay. Well, what happened is they are in a place of promotion for uh, being obedient to God, all right? So um, this is a class of spirit being, and some of them um, have left God, and they are very, very fierce beings, okay? Um, very, very powerful. And also in heaven, they emit great fire and glory and holiness. That's why when they sing holy, 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 um, there's great glory. Okay, so what happened is we find out a mystery of them in Numbers 21. Now, whether you like it or not, guys, their name, here you have this seraphim, you might think little angel with a cherub. No, this thing is like a dragon as well. So, <laughs> now, when, if you see them in heaven, you won't necessarily see them that way because they are a fiery being and the, the more or less aspects of their body is covered with wings and glory and fire and you can't really see this. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying I've seen this, but if the Hebrew word for this being is fiery serpent. So if you look at Numbers 21, it tells you about a mystery of them. Um, so what happens is these two guys, or the fiery serpent, so uh, what happened is these beings rejected God and uh, but two of them did not, and they must have done things to gain great victory because God uses them as a testimony that uh, when the children of Israel also rebelled and complained, they were, God sent fiery serpents, and they burnt them. They were killing a bunch of them. So then what he did is he put, had them put a fiery serpent. That's why that medical uh, thing looks like it's a fiery serpent on a pole, and if they looked at that being, they were healed. So what's happening is these fiery serpents are seraphim, uh, and they're uh, representing an era of time. They're representing an era of glory, and these, uh, I believe, are these, those that God has promoted as an example of this era of fiery serpents, okay? And we might look at that as the era of fiery serpents as, uh, for example, uh, dinosaurs, okay? Because um, that's basically what we're, we're talking about here. Now, well, we have dinosaurs on the earth now. You know, you have an alligator or something like that. But there was an era of time that we're going to look into and call that the reptilian era. So over that reptilian era, the seraphim are the leaders. They are the example that God has promoted to his throne to allow them to worship him um, and, 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 and stand in great authority. Okay? Okay? So... Uh, and then, uh, and then what I believe is whenever we see the number of wings that they have, that represents 
uh, eras of time and promotion where you fulfill a role and then they go higher. And so many times uh, when you see wings, the number of wings represent promotion. So they have six wings. Okay, So that's an era of time. Now the other era of time is the cherubim. And essentially what I'm saying here is that the cherubim represent the era of time of this recreation. Okay, So the seraphim are going back prior uh, to uh, where we are now um, in terms of Genesis 1, 2 and on. Um, but the cherubim now come into position uh, during mankind. Okay, And so... Uh, so what we have is their order is they first guard the tree of life after they, um, Adam and Eve, eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, Now, um, then we find them in Noah's covenant where they represent the four faces of God and they represent the faces um, of these classifications of animals. So we have birds, we have uh, uh, domestic animals, um, and then we have... Uh, you know, wild beasts or mammals and um, man, okay? And so there, you, you, you can also observe a, um, a promotion in the sense that you have four wings when they're described in Ezekiel 1, and they have six wings in Revelation uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. Okay, so now let's kind of look at, um, uh, so that, and this is important for us to know. As high priests, we must know our history. So this is our history of those that have served before us, okay? And, um, and unfortunately, during mankind, and all this stuff is the same, guys. It's just all the same. It's just the same mistakes over and over. God creates it. It's good. He allows uh, his beings to make decisions. Now, there are some, praise God, that have made good decisions that you, but in, in terms of mankind, you have these beings. They screwed up. God judges the earth. God gives it to man, um, man screws it up, and, you know, and it keeps coming. Then he's like, okay, we'll have a nation, Jews, all right. Uh, they screw it up. Then he said, well, I'll send my son, and I'll have a church. Well, that's screwing it up, too. Don't kid yourself, guys. The church is not following God. Look at the sin in the lives of the people, okay? So, uh, we have made constant mistakes, and it's the same beings over and over. They are not new. They've been around thousands of years, and we keep falling for the same stuff. That's the thing I'm trying to emphasize, that we must put our foot down and say, enough is enough. Let's stop screwing this up. I mean, really, it's just embarrassing. Okay, so now let's look at this era of time. Um, I know I'm speaking fast. I have to go through this stuff, but it's important. So now we're on page three, and we're going to call this the reptilian era or time of the dinosaurs and an era of time on the earth that was led by angels. Okay, so... Um, we can find information about this in Jeremiah 4, 23 through 28, Psalm 74, 12 through 15, uh, Psalm 104, 6 through 9, uh, Ezekiel 26, 19 to 21, and 2 Peter, which we already looked at, 3, 5 through 7. Okay, so now let's go. I think, uh, I think Jeremiah is a great place to go because he gives um, some real vivid information here in detail about uh, this place or um, and what took place here. Okay. So let's read it. Uh, Jeremiah 4, 23, I beheld the earth and the, it was without form and void, and the heavens had no light. Okay? So what's happening? No sun. we seeing the earth in Genesis 1, 2. Now watch what he hap what he says. Now he's saying, I'm, he's saying I'm not seeing this, right? But what he's really saying is that this was here and now it's gone. Okay? I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled. And the hills were moved like me. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, right? And all the birds of the heavens were fled. So he's actually giving you information about what took place prior. Now, there was no man, obviously, because man wasn't here yet. But what he's saying is there's no intelligent life forms that were responsible here anymore. They're, they're gone. They're judged, okay? So this is an era of time that was led by angels, right? And I, so, so, so the birds, so we have animals here um, that are gone. I beheld, and the fruitful place was a wilderness. So it was once fruitful. So we have plants, and it was a fruitful place, right? Now is a wilderness. So something happened. And all of the cities are broken down. So there once was cities, but there isn't anymore. They're broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. 
all right? So there's a lot of stuff in this planet, guys, that's just older than mankind, okay? There are structures, there's cities, there's stuff underwater, there's stuff all over the place, there's stuff that humankind does not have the ability to lift. You know, foundations are so heavy. But watch this. For the Lord has, for the whole land has become desolate. So the, it was fruitful. Now it's desolate. Yet will I not make a full end. So God is saying, I'm judging this place, but I created it to be inhabited. These people have screwed it up. These beings have screwed it up. And this is what it looks like. But I have not made a full end. Uh, for this, uh, for this, the earth shall mourn and the heavens shall be black. So the earth has had to be subject to mourning and it's mourning uh the loss of the sin and weight of the beings that were on it and the heavens around the earth are black and be, uh, because i have spoken it i have purposed it and i will not repent even when i turn back okay uh the whole city shall flee now watch this for the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen wow so who is this these guys are the four spirits of the heavens. So even though we have beings that have screwed it up a long time, we have beings that are on our side and they have not screwed it up. They've been faithful to God and they are the great warriors that have dominion and authority that wipe out all these nasty things um, that are here. They shall go into thickets and climb. So these mighty warriors came down to this planet and defeated these beings, these enemies, but the, it's important that you understand the whole city, so there are many cities, but they fled at the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. So when you hear the sound and the noise of the horsemen and bowmen, that is the four spirits of the heavens. Praise God. Okay, so, uh, all right, so what, uh, now another thing about all these verses, let me say this, another thing about um, the scriptures, uh, it talks about this uh, Rahab. And, and R A H A B, uh, and that means proud, and it is formerly the fourth planet in the uh, galaxy. Okay, so in, in Isaiah fifty one nine it says you, you cut Rahab and wounded the dragon. So what happened is there there was there's a, there's now um, a asteroid belt in what was once the fifth planet in our solar system, but it was destroyed. God blew it up. And now it's just a belt. But the order of all the planets within our solar system is different in their number because of this. And so this planet is a witness and testimony of God's judgment that's there to this day. All right? Um, and you have broken Rahab in pieces. That's Psalm 89.10. So, um, so it's between Mars and Jupiter. All right? Okay, so now in this era of time, there were a number of judgments and things that took place on the earth. It wasn't just one. God kept warning, stop doing this stuff. Um, but basically what we have is we have asteroids destroying dinosaurs. Um, and he said, um, you broke the heads of the dragons in the waters and the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gave them to be meat in the wilderness. That's Psalm 74, 13. So if you're saying that all of the dinosaurs were destroyed at Noah's time, what about this? Because what you have is you have them um, living in the waters and you have an asteroid hit it, for it, forcing them on land, and then you have those waters receding, leaving them there, and they were meat to be eaten. Okay? So what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with a asteroid um, hitting the earth, causing many of these dinosaurs to perish and then them for them to sit there. So this is not the time of Noah's flood. There were other events that took place. Okay, So uh, these, these places, these eras of this world that then was, it is described very vividly as a time of God's fierce anger when all these things took place. Okay, I got to go through this quickly. Job 26, 11, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. Where are these pillars? These are those that before his throne. Um, obviously, we looked at the earth mourning and the heavens black and becoming desolate. Um, Ezekiel 26, 21 says, I will make you a terror and no more uh, never found again. So many of these, uh, remember the beings here, these angelic beings are eternal. Um, so that um, you know, they're not like just man that just dies, you know, but they're um, 
eternal. So they must be incarcerated in different places. Uh, and they must be moved, okay? So then what happens? We have this great destruction um, in destroyed cities. The world in a, uh, a wilderness is destroyed with cities. That's Isaiah uh, 14, 17. Desolate cities, not inhabited. Uh, Ezekiel 26, 19. All the cities were broken down. Jeremiah 4, 26. Um, you made a city a heap and a defense city, a ruin and a palace of strangers to be no city. That's Isaiah 25, 2. So many of these verses I'm giving you, I encourage you to read them in context, and you'll see that there's other things happening within these verses that are not uh, within human history. Okay, so what happened? Destroyed with a flood. The world that there was was overflowed and by perish. That's 2 Peter. Um, I shall bring up uh, the deep upon you, and great waters shall cover. Shall cover. That's Ezekiel 26, 19. Ezekiel 26 really talks about this time. Uh, Cover with the deep as with a garment and water over the mountains. Uh, Psalm 104, 6. Okay? So, now, what are you saying, Leland? We're, uh, what we're saying is that uh, we, we uh, where did everybody go? Okay, well, some of them are still here, right? <laughs> so even though uh, God's like, okay, I'm going to do this again, I'm going to allow some of you guys to have access to this place and this man I've given you. Um, you know, he's not, God is not trying to trick us. He's confident in you. And so with, with, with all temptations and things that we are subject to, that we, we must believe that, you know, God is good. And, you know, he has confidence in us. And his confidence that we are not going to uh, make the same mistakes. So he will allow things. He will allow shenanigans that, you know, will say, well, we're going to make good decisions, right? Okay, so some of them are still here. Um, some of them are in hell. I will bring you down with them that descend into the pit and with the people of old time and set you in the lower parts of the earth, places desolate of old that you will not go down in the pit. That's Ezekiel 26, 20. So many of them are incarcerated and they're not allowed to uh, be on the face of the earth. Um, but there's other ones that are, you know, banished. There's borders that they cannot cross in our solar system and they are in other planets. So in uh, Psalm 104, verse 6, uh, there's a flood. And at your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away to the mountains, to valleys. And you set bounds that they cannot pass over and enter the earth. Wow. So some of them are, you know, banished to other places and they can't come back. But they're eternal beings. So God's banished them to other planets, faraway planets that uh, they cannot be here. But unfortunately, guys, the main reason I'm on this subject and I had to deal with this was um, the reality that, look, um, truth is stranger than fiction. And I'm more or less trying to come to grips with a message to give you from the Holy Scripture that the Bible talks about things that um, are, you know, controversial. So, for example, um, you know, this stuff about aliens and all that. That is real stuff going on, guys. Let's not, you know, be naive to say this isn't going on. People are being, um, stuff is going on that isn't good. But what I want you to realize is this, is that these beings are, what they're doing is they're, you know, what they're doing is they're doing the same thing as what you can see in human history, okay? So, for example, they, they are not, um, you know, necessarily as clear as what you might think. They are actual spirit beings. They, they are not angels in what you're normally used to, but what they're doing is they are violating their boundaries and they are taking mankind to do the same, to create this other hybrid stuff, the Nephilim. It's, and this is going on. So you have all these things and what they're doing is they're, you know, taking mankind and they're doing weird, you know, experiments and stuff. That this stuff is going on, right? But um, it's it's important to, for you to realize that um, the history of this, that, you know, look, um, this stuff is not new. Um, you know, this is the same thing that got happened in the garden. You have this dragon in there. I mean, I don't know if you think about that, but it, it is. And so God allowed this thing in there. And this was like the head guy. This isn't, you know, there were other ones there too that probably didn't trick Adam to the same degree. But Maynard said this one was more cunning, and you know, and so God is always allowing this stuff, folks. Okay, but uh, we we have to stand and protect our families uh, because 
you know, there is a teaching and doctrine from some of them. And they're like, you know, forget about the Bible. Forget about all that religion stuff. We made up all these religions. We made the earth. We did all this stuff. And we're gods, and you can follow us. We have all the answers. No, we, we, they don't have all the answers. They are now violating and lying to you. Um, we must believe in the witness and testimony of the Holy Scriptures because they are true. But the Scriptures talk about this stuff, okay? So yes, they have ships. They are not just spirit beings that traveled. Yes, they can uh, be physically touched, okay? Yes, th this, this stuff is going on, okay? But, um, you know, we must distinguish. You know, God put us here and he put animals and they were good. And then they put other stuff here that was not good, and we had to decide, okay? So um, the, the, the thing is that there are life forms out in the universe that are good, but they are not going to violate borders. They're not going to violate God's laws, okay? So if, if they come and they, you know, take you up in a ship to have sex with you, that isn't good, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know, it just isn't good, all right? But I'm also not going to be naive to say these things don't um, exist because they do. It's it's real. I'm sorry. I, I'm, you can you can say what you want to me. I'm just trying to give you a uh, a holy scripture point of view that you know this stuff is there's an answer, and I had to come to grips with the fact that you know what um, I need to have an answer for this subject. Okay. And uh, some of the things out there about, you know, just kind of fallen angels and Nephilim um, cover a piece of it, but they don't give us enough, okay? So, look, um, what I'm saying is some of these things are out there. They are on other planets. They are, that, is, that has happened. They, these are beings. Um, they're not just, I mean, there they are ships, you know? This stuff is real, okay? Um, but it's not new. That's what I'm trying to get across. It's not new. We don't have to be freaked out about this. But look, there's weird stuff going on. You know, uh, if you say you're a Christian and you're, let's say you're a Catholic and you follow the Pope, well, the Pope is preparing you for some um, alien to come to, you know, uh, and he wants to baptize. It. So look, this stuff is, you know, <laughs> this stuff is happening. Where we have to deal with it. Um, but the, don't believe the Pope. Um, don't, don't believe that stuff. Um, they're preparing for stuff but they're saying that you know they these aliens and these things they don't they they follow different rules no that is the god of the universe um <laughs> the whole universe must follow the same rules okay so it's it, it's important that we uh, come to grips with some of this stuff this is why if you're still here and you're still watching this this is where i had to look at this subject matter okay so um all right there we go i got it in it's about 43 minutes and that's it. If there's anything I went over quickly, I encourage you to go back and rewind. If, if you have problems with this, uh, I encourage you not to just write me off and say I'm crazy. But, you know, put it in back burner and, uh, you know, maybe go back to it later. Okay? All right. So we're done. Um, that's a little history on kings and priests, history of spirit beings, history of the earth uh, before uh, seven-day creation. And so God bless you. God loves you. And, um, and we'll have more on other uh, roles and other things coming up, guys. Okay, thanks.